The two NASA astronauts piloting Boeing's Starliner spacecraft have now been stuck in space for 63 days and there's still no clear return date in sight. The Starliner launched in June carrying two astronauts to the International Space Station but it's faced a number of problems calling into question whether it can safely return to Earth. NASA is now scrambling to address the issues but says it's working on contingency plans including bringing the crew home on a SpaceX craft in 2025. Well, joining me now is Dan Riskin. He's CTV's science and technology expert. Dan, thanks for joining us. What's it's going on here? Well, it's not great uh, for Boeing, but I think uh, the headlines are a little bit misleading. People keep phrasing this as though, you know, they were planning to go through LaGuardia and their plane got delayed and now they've been there for two months. But that's not what's going on here. I mean, these are astronauts. They trained to go to space. They knew full well when they went up for a planned 10-day mission that the purpose of the mission was to test that spacecraft. And they would stay there as long as that took. And it's just taking a long time. And so, you know, if you'd asked them beforehand if they might stay for two or even six months, that wouldn't have been outside the realm of possibilities. The purpose of this is not to make it back in time for dinner with the family next weekend. The purpose of this is to test that spacecraft. And the thing about that spacecraft is that once they undock from the International Space Station and come back down, many of the pieces that have question marks on them are going to burn up on re-entry. So, so the spacecraft doesn't all come back as part of the landing vehicle. Many parts of that are going to burn up on re-entry, and those are the very parts that they want to know the most about. And so they are taking advantage of this time where they do have time and patience to have a careful look at all the pieces, test things, see what they've got, so that they know as much as possible before they end this mission. So I think the phrasing that they're stuck and they wish they could get back, but but they're, you know, there's this huge delay and they don't know when they're going to be able to come home, really puts it in a different light than the way that NASA and these astronauts are thinking about this opportunity. Yeah, and you make a good point. It's not exactly land, like landing at Toronto's Pearson Airport or JFK, but are space missions like this usually so problematic? You know, we saw that there were issues with the takeoff and the, there was a failed launch several times and now we've got these issues. So is this normal or part of the process? Well, it is part of the process, uh, but it's not normal. And it, it's because it's the first time, right? And of course, you know, with spacecraft, when things go badly, people die. And so, and that has not happened. So with that sort of context in mind, this is an engineering problem that could potentially be overcome. And it's going to be an engineering decision about whether this kind of spacecraft is worth putting more money into to get it working or whether this was just a failed design to begin with. And those are the big swirling questions right now. Fundamentally, the U.S. space program decided they wanted to privatize part of going to space. They thought it would be cheaper. They thought it would be more innovative. They thought they would have multiple companies that were making different spacecraft that could take us up to places like the International Space Station and beyond. And so they put out a call for bids, and Boeing and SpaceX both answered that call. SpaceX has had a tremendous success. They've already been sending people back and forth to the International Space Station for years now, and Boeing has yet to get its legs under it. And so it's a big question mark about whether we're going to become uh, you know, basically stuck in a situation where we have one functional company that can take people to the International Space Station or whether we have a competitive environment where different companies are competing, keeping prices a little bit lower and resulting in more innovation. And so it really the stakes are very high here for the space program as a whole. All right, Dan, so let's talk about what comes next. NASA says it's looking at some contingency options. We mentioned one before. Just talk us through all of those. Yeah, so one of the uh, plans is the one they're hoping for, which is that they figure out what's going on with this thing. Uh, Butch and Sonny get back in there. They fly back down to Earth. They land. And then the long process begins of, of assuring everyone that the spacecraft is going to be ready to take regular astronauts on regular trips. That's still in the cards. That's still something that everyone's hoping for. Um, and it's important to note that even NASA admits that if something were to happen, some kind of an emergency scenario, Right now, the plan is for people to get into that spacecraft and take it back to Earth. So they believe that it's safe enough for an emergency mission back to Earth. It's just a question of mark about whether that's going to be what they do on the regular mission. The other sort of big sort of worst case scenario on the other end is that the next SpaceX mission, instead of taking four astronauts up, only takes two astronauts up and that uh, Butch and Sonny then become part of the space station crew. They fill the roles of the two astronauts that didn't get to come up on this trip. And then when that mission ends, they go back, having completed a six-month mission to the International Space Station. So those are sort of the two extremes. Uh, those are the two scenarios that NASA has laid out. And it remains to be seen which of those two, or maybe something in between them, 
uh, is what actually transpires. All right, Dan, we will be watching this and I'm sure you will be too. Thanks so much for your time and for your insights today. Thank you. Dan Riskin, he's our science and technology expert.